It is still September 27, 2020, and we are at one of my one of my personal favorite outcrops on the north side of Highway 480. Just so you know, any corrections or additions will appear on screen. All right, just let you know in advance. But this is one of my personal favorite outcrops on the north side of 480 here in the Upper Peninsula because of the stromatolites. But before we get into that, I need to tell you where we are stratigraphically. We are within the Kona Formation. It is Paleoproterozoic in age and largely a siliceous carbonate rock. And it is sedimentary in origin. And here you can see it kind of dips this way. And you can see things like primary sedimentary structures on more muddy bedding plains. There are some uneven ripples and some mud cracks in this. So we know this was deposited in a shallow marine environment. Now, I mentioned stromatolites because there's a lot of them here. And they, they have been studied here. This formation is one of the best places to study stromatolites. And as you can see, people have taken out three inch cores through the layers. Now, the stromatolites here aren't mounded very well. They're more mats that you can see. You can see it here and you can see like collapsed within it as well. There has been some tectonic deformation here. This is equivalent stratigraphically to the Ranville and the southern part of the Upper Peninsula and the Gordon Lake Formation in Ontario. They were deposited at about the same time. Not only are there beautiful stromatolite layers here with incorporations of little, little bits of other rock, the stone is highly valued as an ornamental stone. You've probably seen it if you've been in rock shops in the Upper Peninsula, polished pieces of it and stuff. Not from this outcrop in particular, but from this area. We're not that far from Marquette. And you can see there is some siliceous parts in here, so there's some quartzite and siltstone within it as well and mudstones you can see how the stromatolite mats weather out there is some undulation but they're pretty level now although stromatolite mats are most common there are some mounds all right and you see them here in this layer it's just loaded with them but you start to go this way and they become less prevalent although there is one here so we do have some mounds in this part of the Kona and you keep seeing these red crystals throughout it as far as I can tell and I've looked at them closely they're just crystals of dolomite they obviously formed after the stromatolites did uh, probably through hydrothermal alteration there is evidence of that here there's some good Ramahijo crystals up on that cliff face there weathering out you can't see them very well down here and i'm not going to get up there you know, crystals in there and the next and within the rounded stromatolites and there it's almost like a breccia right there and you can see that here is where we get our main body of siliceous carbonates is here now you see this here and i pointed this out before as a bedding plane, as a siliceous bedding plane. This is a mudstone from here down into bedded with carbonate. So this is some sort of other member of the Kona. It's not a different formation as far as I'm aware. Down here, really well, well-developed mud cracks there. And we have more evidence of hydrothermal activities in these, I suspect they're quartzites. I'm not gonna deface this outcrop. The white, it looks like quartz, or it could just be a quartzite bed. I haven't looked at it in any great detail. It kind of does follow bedding, but then you get over here and it looks a little more jumbled. So it could be hydrothermal here too. Okay, so the stratigraphy a little bit, I'm gonna go through the layers here. We can divide this out geologically and show you how we do that in the field. This outcrop does appear in my roadside Upper Peninsula book, so I'm not going to go too, too much detail. But 
But you can see that the strike is essentially here. Just remember, strike is the line that connects two points of equal elevation. And dip is always, by definition, down slope 90 degrees to that. And we dip uh, about this way-ish. I mean, it looks like it's dipping this way, but it's really more like that. It's not too far off from the outcrop base. Now, our layers. We have zero, because it pitches out right here. We have zero to roughly about a meter and a half of this mudstone, which seems to be mostly siltstone, uh, but there's probably some slates here as well. There's some fine grain stuff. And this is the only unit that hosts these dead following white quartzite and whether they're hydrothermal or not, you know, I haven't studied in detail, but my money's on hydrothermal. Then above that, you have maybe, you know, under a foot, so 20 to 30 centimeters of this is also a mudstone, but it's more churdy. It's, it's, it's very fine grained. It's more silica, almost all silica. So it differs from this. And in this, you start to see stromatolite mats. And you also see some of those crystals. This is the basal contact of our second unit. This is our first unit. And this is the top contact of that second unit. So this is it right here. It does seem to thicken slightly that way, not much. Now above that is where we have our domal stromatolites. And this layer varies. We've got maybe from 15 centimeters to maybe half a meter or so of it. And this is the layer that contains all of our domal stromatolites, but it doesn't contain them strictly throughout. There's other lithologies here. But this is our carbonate carbonate. And this is where that drill core down there was taken. And then above this unit, which is our number three, we have more salacious carbonates of more matted stromatolites. Then you come over here, and that layer is maybe 50 centimeters to 75 centimeters, so half a meter to three quarters. We get another mudstone here. This mudstone has a lot of iron in it. That's the browns and, and these deep grays. And it's pretty much a slate. It's very salacious other than the hematite. And there's stromatolite mats in it as well. Kind of see them weathered out right here. So this is almost, but not quite, abandoned iron formation. You had about a meter of that. So that's unit five. And like the basal unit mudstone, it has white quartz at its top, very close to it. Up there, it's just not as thick. Then above that, you have our, I'm just gonna call it our sixth and final unit. At least two or three meters. I'm not climbing up there. That is also salacious carbonate. There is white quartzite cutting it up there. It doesn't have as much of well-developed stromatolites in it as does our unit three and four down here. So we have our basal mudstone, which is unit one. We have that small salacious carbonate mudstone, which is our unit two. Then we have our unit three, which is our domital stromatolites. Then we have your unit four, which is salacious carbonate. Or unit five is what I'll call a pseudo biff, if you will. It's almost but not quite a banded iron formation. And there's stromatolite layers at the top of that as well. And then our unit six is this more massive salacious carbonate. Here's more evidence of hydrothermal alteration. Carbonaceous rock in through our mudstone, which is the top of it. I'm standing essentially on top of the mudstone. And here's a uh, Another beautiful dome stromatolite. This is a beautiful weathered out stromatolite. You can tell scale by my hand. And you can see beautiful crystals weathering out. And there's the other one down there. Up here are more matted 
It's stromatolites as opposed to domes. That one layer seems to produce all the domes. Everything outside of that seems to be matted. Anyway, I think that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I hope you learned something.